I just Googled the median income in Seattle and for males, it's $80,000 a year. And for females, it's about $60,000 a year. Yeah, okay, this video is not about gender inequality, but wow, that's a topic that we should probably talk about soon. I was just looking at the median income to figure out what affordability looks like in Seattle. So if we take those two numbers and average it, it's about $70,000 a year. That is gonna be our median income of what people are realistically earning in Seattle. If you make $70,000 a year, you'll be taxed about $14,000 here in Washington State, leaving your take home pay at $56,000 a year or around $4,600 a month. Now taking into account the golden rule of thumb that a lot of people go by, that is your rent should be about one third of your income. $4,600 divided by three leaves you at about $1,500 a month to budget for your rent. So what does $1,500 look like here in Seattle for the average person? Is it affordable? Let's take a look. comes to figuring out where you want to live, you have two options here. You can live in something old or you can live in something new. Comment below which do you prefer, old or new. They definitely both have pros and cons, but depending on which you prefer, you're going to get a totally different experience here when it comes to apartment hunting. Starting with the new, when I put in apartments for rent in the city area of Seattle for around $1,500, I quickly found that your only option is going to be a studio apartment. And at that, it might be a micro micro studio apartment. A studio is typically around four to 500 square feet, but here in Seattle, you might get closer to two or 300 square feet. So we're about to check out a micro studio that is 255 square feet in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Yeah, this is what brand new gets you. Hi, I'm Henry. I'm Riley. And we have been living in this micro studio for about seven months. So this unit is about 250 square feet. In rent, I'm paying just about $1,500. Okay, and then can you walk me through kind of like the layout of it? It's very simple, yes. Uh, so the front door right there. Our closet is very tiny, but we make it work. So pretty simple entry. This is our closet. Very minimalist as far oh, as yes. uh, what kind of clothes we can have. You store all of like your fold up clothes in this? Those are my scarves okay. and then my scrubs. Uh, we got pretty cool kitchen set up. Just doesn't have an oven, but we make it work. Pretty simple kitchen, mm -hmm. no oven, pretty good sized refrigerator, fortunately. Always gotta have an espresso machine. Do you have the most beautiful corner unit though? I'm loving these windows, loving this tree. And then here's the bedroom. Yes. <laughs> this is a Murphy bed. Oh, do you guys, how often do you like actually Never. put it up? No, <laughs> that's what I would think. <laughs> In another closet. Yes, gotta, oh, yeah. have, gotta have the umbrella. <laughs> Bathrooms are pretty good size for the size of the unit. Mm -hmm. Washer and dryer in unit though. That's yeah, that's really nice they did that. So this unit can sometimes feel like a hotel room, but then also feels like a home where you know, we have the washer and dryer unit more of an actual kitchen. So I've been really enjoying living here. Living in Seattle is really different than what I'm used to, so it's a real cool change of pace. Overall, I think their unit was pretty nice. I really liked the kitchen area. For a single person, it really has all that you could need right in it. While I was looking at listings, I also saw that some of the micro studio companies will let you change buildings to different cities without tacking on any extra fees to your lease. So if you're someone that wants to move a lot or travels, doesn't know what they want to do with their life and is really minimal and doesn't have a lot of stuff, then a micro apartment could be a really good option for you. The perks of living in a unit that's brand new is first off you're gonna have a sleeker look to everything and it's gonna feel nice and new you also a lot of the times will find that you can get a washer and dryer in your unit which is such a huge plus plus. and lastly my favorite thing about newer architecture is they really utilize windows in the best way possible you find like big floor-to-ceiling windows and just places that let in a lot of light whereas older units tend to have smaller windows now the biggest con of living in something newer here in Seattle is it's very 
very, very, very expensive. 255 square feet for $1,500 is pretty crazy and I think most people do not wanna spend that money on something so small. I also wanted to show you guys what more of a traditional normal studio that's 400 to 500 square feet would look like here in Seattle. What I found upon touring is really they're closer to $1,800. This is a building that I toured called the 101 Broadway. It's a really, really good location in Capitol Hill, which is just a small walk to downtown. It really is an ideal place to live in the city. There's so many bars and restaurants and all these things. So you're definitely paying for your location. And it was cool. It had a rooftop as well. So a studio here was $1,800. This is what it looks like. If you wanted something a little bigger, they had urban one bedrooms. An urban one bedroom is basically, it still feels like a studio to me because it's just like this walled off section where you have a little bit of more square footage, but there's no window or anything. It's really not a traditional bedroom, but it's more of a walled off space for your bed to go. That urban one bedroom was $2,100. And then a real one bedroom there was $2,695, which is super expensive, but I will say their one bedroom was so incredible. It had skyline space needle views from the bathroom, the bedroom, and the living room and kitchen. It was so crazy. It was like this beautiful corner unit. I was like, I wanna live here. It was so, so nice. So if you have a bigger budget, you can get something cool. If you come to Seattle, you will see there are so many like brand new apartment buildings being built and that are already up. So that's a look inside how much those cost and what it looks like. You know, you're more ranging from like $1,800 up to four or $5,000 for a two bedroom. It's pretty crazy, but it is what it is. If you decide you want to live in an older building, here is what you can get. I found this apartment complex called the Stock Bridge. It's located in First Hill, which is right in between Capitol Hill and downtown. It's honestly a really, really good location. It is a little busy by this area. It's like a really busy road and everything, but it's super convenient and you're definitely living in the city. So they had true studios for $1,500 and here's what they looked like. This building is about 100 years old and it actually used to be a hotel. So it had some cool, unique features to it. I thought these units were really cool. They had like these old hardwood floors and really pretty molding and like some had built-in units to it. Like biggest thing that I noticed immediately with picking some older building to live in is you are gonna get a lot more bang for your buck and a lot more space. A studio for $1,500 was about 400 square feet. And also upon touring it, they had these huge closets. The closets were so big, some residents would put beds in them and make it like a little makeshift bedroom. And the closets are actually not factored into the square footage. So they're actually advertising a smaller amount of square footage than you actually get. It definitely felt bigger and more sectioned off. You had like that living space and the kitchen wasn't like just a wall of that living space. Like the kitchen was sectioned off. The biggest cons of living in an older building is the kitchen and bathroom tend to be outdated and and it might not be your style. Personally, I did find it to be like pretty ugly, but also to me, a kitchen and bathroom is something that I can overlook if I'm gonna have a bigger space with nice hardwood floors and good lighting in a good location. You just have to figure out at a budget of $1,500 what you're willing to live with and what you're not willing to live with. The other thing is you're gonna find that there aren't really any amenities to these buildings. In this specific building, they didn't have a washer and dryer in unit. So the only like amenity was a laundry room and that was basically it. Whereas the micro studio did have the washer and dryer in unit and they had a rooftop that was like pretty nice as well. So to sum things up, Seattle is obviously a city that is becoming very expensive and the average monthly rent for the average income earner doesn't get you very much. It really limits you to a studio apartment if you want to live on your own, which is pretty crazy. So that's it. If you guys wanna see a video about what you can get in Seattle for under $1,000 a month, which would be more of a shared living situation. I did film some of those too that I wanna share with you guys. So be sure to comment below if you're interested in that and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you're new here and you're looking to live in Seattle or move here or any of that stuff, I'll have my other videos about Seattle listed below as well. And I would love if you'd consider subscribing cause I make videos about Seattle a lot. And you can check out my vlog channel where I just show my daily life living in Seattle so you can learn more about what it's like to really live here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.